to our one of our first of a series of uh, DPPD in-house, so Diploma Professional Development, and you lucky people signed up, I believe, for concept-based learning. Briefly, jot down your reasons for selecting concept-based learning. Should you remember when you selected concept-based learning? <laughs> What questions, if you could reduce your confusions or your questions about concept-based learning to one or two core questions, what would those be or what would that question, how would that question be expressed? On the same Can you repeat part? the question? Uh, so write down one question that sums up your... Okay, just take a, can you take a look at this? So some kind of visual trigger, perhaps? Yeah. The first yes, two. is that? None of them were concept. None of them were concept. No, mm -hmm. that's what I, I so I said to talk. I tried to find a link. There was no link. There's no concept. So I was like, okay, why this word for there? Okay. Why are they written there? But you were trying to find some kind of link. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the link that I found was some of the words I, I associated with like my morning routine when I was getting up in the morning. So I, the three I wrote down kind of associated with, with that. All right. I, I looked at uh, how they, mm -hmm. the pattern, how they are arranged. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't looking at the words so much. Okay, okay. and then you might have tried to replicate that pattern where you put the words, your two words. My one. <laughs> oh, <you're laughs> one. <laughs> I think you've probably got 100% on that word and where you placed it. But just to check, let's have another look. So, yeah, how about the two with the capital letters, actually? <laughs> okay, so we just looked at strategies. Now, a couple of you were getting towards this, thinking about concepts, thinking about connections, think about comfort in a hotel room. And when I say hotel room, let's go with four or five star <laughs> hotel room, just to be precise. Because those are some of the objects that we would associate, we would come to expect of a comfortable four or five star hotel room. Um, so take another look. I'll give you the same amount of time, it was about 15 um, What changed? <laughs> So what changed? Context, I suppose. Mm -hmm. okay. so and more time. I knew I, I knew I was supposed to be looking this time. <laughs> <laughs> Last time it was just up there and I wasn't paying attention. So <laughs> seriously, that was, and then it was like, oh, it was there and it was gone. So this time I knew I had a task to do. Mm -hmm. What's that? It was there and it was now. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. this is it. So, but there was a context too. And then we can empathize with students when they're not focused and they kind of set I guess. Neil? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, like, I was now visualizing a hotel room and kind of helping me uh, remember what was on the board. Anyone else? So I'm aware of time, and I do want you to be able to walk out with something concrete that is applicable to your own subject area. So um, you mentioned uh, context, and so, and those words, those 15 words are 
what we can say are our content and how to. Our overarching aim is to think about those concepts, as Isa mentioned earlier on. Um, what is the core concept in common that can link together content and context? Let's try this just really quickly. So what's the difference between these two? This, is based, this list is based on what? This list is based on what? Feel free to chat with your elbow partners. <laughs> And anyone, just holler if you think you've got the answer. Yes, is that? Concepts and topics. Ah, right. Concepts and topic based, or concepts and synonyms? Content based, absolutely. Is this familiar to us, or is this? all brand new, this idea of concepts underscoring our curriculum planning. We just might not have called it these words. There's probably something that's been going on, what's old is new, and it's just then you pay attention to naming it. Uh -huh. And I think some subject might Lens. land easily to concept versus others. Like I, I know in history it's, it's very easy you get into content very quickly in a matter of... But it's like if you're looking at what Eileen had on, she had content plus context equals concept. So if I, in French right now, I'm doing like a... Um, um, what's a co-portable. So once the kids have the context, then it's easier for them to remember the vocabulary that is related to it. So that's content. That's what I said. Some, that's what I said. Some subject might learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I do the very wall, that's my, my phone. That's okay. My, my two, right. my two concepts would be cause and consequences mm -hmm. right away, mm -hmm. with no even thinking about it. Right? Yeah. It's just coming very quickly. Mm -hmm. Right? Thank you. Because I'm going to argue that we are all concept-based learning practitioners. Yeah. Yeah. We all do that. Because correct me if I'm wrong, we are all middle years program teachers. We all teach classes in the NYP. We have all spent time with our curriculum mapping system, Atlas. And at the top, you will recall key concepts, related concepts, global concepts. Um, so if you want to define these concepts, I'm going to turn to Lynn Erickson. So, so traditional curriculum. I'm not saying that we don't teach facts, that we don't go through topics. We need to adhere to the requirements of our various curricula. But we're all aware of making <coughs> connections, of giving students agency so that the student is at the center of learning and the student has, therefore, responsibility for making connections, for using approaches to learning and transferable skills. So that we foster in our classrooms right now at CTNIS this development and engagement of personal intellect at a deep level and uh, we recognize through um, emphasizing universal ideas, the concepts that underpin our classroom teaching that in this Google world Students don't need to recall facts in the same way, but they need to have an applicable and deep understanding of the core concepts. So what's happening at the diploma level? Lynn Erickson is currently working with the IBO, um, and there are various subject teams who are reviewing a subjects in uh, group one to group six, such that these guides will be published at different times. It depends on the uh, timeline for your particular subject area. But the emphasis will be the same as, it, well, similar to NYP in that the trans students should graduate demonstrating a clear ability to transfer concepts and conceptual understanding through time, across cultures, across situations. And students will graduate from the diploma with the ability to see patterns and connections between new knowledge and prior knowledge. 
In the MYP, we have a, this set of related concepts. So I've just picked out language and literature group one, and also integrated science graphic that visualizes the diploma curriculum. So all of our individual subjects in our different six groups are on the outer ring. But in the center, you've got the child, then approaches to learning those transferable skills. And then theory of knowledge, extended essay, creativity, action, and service. So there is this kind of movement to some kind of universalization of the learning experience. So over to you. So Lynn Erickson provides us in 2011 with this scaffold, this model. And Denise, my lovely assistant, has prepared some scaffolds for you so that you can fill in as relevant to your current unit or a unit that you are working on or a unit that you have taught and you are interested in applying. History, facts, moving into topics here, early European migration, through to concepts, migration, needs, change, cultural diffusion, and then the essential question that we're starting to find in the new diploma guide, subject guides. What is the essential question? What statement can we make that combines concepts with the topics that are crucial to our subject area? People adapt to changing environments. Migration leads to cultural diffusion resulting in social economic change. For the arts, for language arts, so group one and group five, I believe, we're, those are more process or skills based subjects. So we have two different models. This one is for the more content based subjects, and then Denise also has one that we call process based subjects. Thank you from the group for choosing to learn a bit more about concept based learning. Um, I want you to just return to the question, and you all jotted down the question at the start. Was that question answered? If not, feel free to leave that with me. Um, I'll pick it up. Um, and maybe on the back, if there are arising questions, feel free to see me, Tracy or Denise, or write that down, and we'll pick that up and try to get back to you if you identify yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you.